And good morning, everyone. David Cross here again. And today I would like to follow up on the virtual list view item, uh, the PowerShell video I created this weekend. Uh, you know, I've, I've been working with this, as, as I mentioned, you know, for quite a few years, and I found that the virtual list view in a performance capacity and uh, in working with large lists or pulling and things like that, that is really the way to go. And I think in, as you start building into those tens of thousands of elements, you're gonna find the, the same thing in performance. So there's a, a couple minor differences about the way list view work when in virtual mode. So number one, uh, the virtual list view has to have some type of variable or some type of list that's going to be used to determine the number of items or to determine the index in the actual virtual list view. So in PowerShell Studio, I built this you know, graphical front end to it. And what I'm doing is setting a global variable, and this is how I kind of do this in my .NET, so that I can build a new object using a generic list. And of that list, I want this to be a generic list of list view items. And these list view items and this global list view variable is going to hold all of our items for our list view to populate into determinate size. So that's the first thing you'll need is a variable to hold this that is a list or some type of list that you can manipulate through the list view item. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to have in your list view itself, when you go to select the, and place it on your controls and your forms, there is a list view parameter that enables you to set up to virtual mode. So you wanna set this to true and leave virtual size to zero as is at the moment. And that's it. So that's really how you enable the functionality. Now working within the virtual list view is also a little different and you need to further set up a a specific function that allows the application to go out and retrieve the virtual items within its memory position and report it back to um, the calling application. So it does that through the list view retrieve virtual item and effectively what you're doing is they have the event arguments, which is usually E in .NET. This is the uh, dollar sign underscore, which represents kind of the this function. Now, one thing I noticed is when I was working with this, and trying to set you know the function itself that if i didn't fully qualify what this item was you know if it didn't know what that virtual item was etc um, it would not give me the help syntax in this so you might need to know just you know what this is so the way it's broken down is the dollar undersigned dot item which is what you're going to specify um, in the retriever is mapped to the global list view dot item and then it has an underscore item index so whenever you go out to update this list view or to get a list view item or to delete it, et cetera, it goes out and retrieves the item using this function. And this is really the only function you need initially, and then you can uh, kind of build onto it from there. Now, in terms of the code, uh, I had put this into a background process, and I'm not gonna go over all of that, but we'll come back into that in a minute. But what I did basically within this helper, and I guess I can show it so we can kind of see how this looks, that I had created a, a list view where I reset the list view virtual size. So anytime you wanna you know, clear the size of the items in the virtual list view, or if you wanna manipulate the variable that it's working with, you need to set the virtual size to zero and that resets effectively the list view, okay? The next part of this is kind of building down through the list view items, this would be a standard uh, build out for those. But when I was going through the, the worker, I had built up a worker run space that allowed me to build all of the list view items and to update the list view control in the background. So while I'm here, we'll go ahead and cover it. And basically what I'm passing into it is the list view item and the list view control. So the list view item is effectively the variable global uh, virtual list view one or two, whichever one it is. And the LV control represents the list view control. In this worker, in order for it to run the background, it's kind of like a delegate function that allows you to interoperate with the background function and the thread that manages the, the controls and the updates. So by doing this, there's also another global variable, which is a hash table called sync hash. And within this synchronized variables, I'm creating a local variable, which is you know like LV for list view equals my global variable so that within the background worker function, I can still interoperate with this variable and monitor it and update it. And so I'm creating several variables for the list view variable and control. I have a couple for the 
uh, variable and I have the status bar if I want to deal with it and is canceled and a counter. So you can effectively put any type of variables you want in here that you're going to be dealing with within this background function. Uh, the run space, I'm creating a you know standard run space. I didn't initialize it to any kind of uh, size, so it should be automatic. I set the apartment state to a single threaded, but I had tried multi-threaded to see if there's any change and there wasn't much of a difference. And then I'm telling it on the thread options that I want to reuse this thread. You know, since we're going up to a million, I don't want to create a million new threads. I want to uh, reuse as much as possible. And then once you've opened that space, then we can start working with inserting those commands into the background worker itself. So uh, setting up the session state proxy, the set variable is where we introduce the sync hash and the global sync hash for synchronizing back and forth between the variables in the external function and the internal space. Now the worker itself is really um, like the PowerShell command, right? Because this is a PowerShell type. We're creating a new script, which is kind of a script block, which is gonna be run within this worker. So at this point then, I introduce the sync cache and I start manipulating the external list view to begin the update, telling it just to you know, freeze itself. We then clear the control itself or the, the variable. So I'm clearing all of the items out of that global variable, and this is the control begin update. I'm setting up the counter just because I wanted to track that at some point, but I think I took that out of there, um, but I'll have to come back to it. Well, no, there it is. We do have the counter. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting a date where I can tell it now, which I'm using as the string within the list view as the text. I'm running this through a loop, just basically saying that it's going to check however many times the control here is set for us. So whatever the numeric value is, it's going to loop through it that many times, which is synced through this hash as the L counter, so the loop counter. I'm using a do events loop in here so that the screen can update if that does take any effect. Um, it's kind of hard to say in the background. But then as we get through this, the key to the virtual list view is that you create a new list view item in memory for each list view that you're going to add. You then have your text, just like you would any other way of manipulating the list view. You then set the text, you send, uh, set any of the sub items that would then map to the columns that you have in your control. And then you add this list view item to your global list view variable. And that's what's going to effectively set it into the list. And then once this is done, we then set at the end of this, we tell the control virtual list size I want you to be sized to the variable item count. And so these counts are representing list view items in that variable. It then sets the variable that it's going to use to populate the control and then sets the index counters to be the number, of course, minus one. So zero index. And then I'm telling it to end update on that sync hash. Now what happens when it runs through this and builds this worker, if you will, it's going to uh, run through, build the worker, and when it runs through this invoke is where it begins the function itself. So it, it creates the, the script block, then it invokes it, and when it invokes it, it's gonna create a handle for us. And this is where everything in the background is set up to monitor the state of the process, and when it's complete, to exit out or to do any other types of functions. So the handle function is uh, very important to understand what's happening in the process, and this is where the complete or incomplete is set. I'm then running a while, and while it's not complete, to go ahead and sleep 10 milliseconds, check the form again, sleep, check again. And then if it's done, I'm doing one more check again to do run space availability. And that's because within this if block, I'm creating that testing time and the difference and if I cancel the process, I want to go ahead and dispose of it here. The problem with that is because this is all background workers, if I dispose of it there, once it ends, it tries to dispose of it again. So I had to check, make sure the red space availability was none. Then if it's not none, I could go ahead and clear it. If it was, just assume it's canceled and exit out. So th that's not very detailed in the background. It's not giving you too much information, but that is how that effectively works. You set up your script block, you create your run space, you add that script block to your worker, you let the background worker manipulate the list view control through the session state proxy, 
And then when that gets initiated into the worker blocks, it creates a handle when it becomes invoked. And then you loop through this until it is effectively done, right? And then in that design, you're you know doing just that. So when we're, we're building this out and running it, when we run this list view command, we're gonna be doing this with the variable, setting each one of these items in the variable and then sizing the list view control. And then when we run the list view, function, we're just looping through and adding a list view item directly to the list view. So again, as you saw, maybe in the, the performance that it's going to be much higher performance on the high end as you get into the thousands of records. Um, and that's where I would start. So if you're doing that, you want to make sure that you kind of have some type of template or, you know, ability to do that. And uh, just for, you know, the sake of understanding this, if you ever need to capture this, you can create little snippets if you're in here. Uh, I'm sure you all know this already. And then you can do, you know, like virtual list view. And that way you can save it, create it in your properties, and then give it some type of text that you can use later. Okay, so uh, just a not very quick, but a quick enough video, I hope, that you can see some of the uh, virtual list view and some of the benefit of it. And if, I, if you have any questions or anything, um, you know, let me know. And, of course, I'll post this out there when I start posting the code for it. All right, so take care, have a great week, uh, should be a good start, and we'll talk soon with some other updates. Take care.